We stand at the dawn of a new age. After hundreds of thousands of years of mankind's development being powered by fossil fuels, widespread access to cheaper energy from renewable resources is no longer utopian science fiction. It's economic reality. Archaeological evidence suggests that humans discovered how to make fire something like half a million years ago. Since then it's been used to cook our food, to warm our homes and to smelt metals. In 1698, Thomas Savory invented a steam pump and in 1765, James Watt conceived the steam engine. Since then, fossil fuels have powered our vehicles and driven industrial machinery, greatly accelerated by the advent of the internal combustion engine about a century later. Of course, all this energy has come at a cost, both to our natural environment and through the impact of greenhouse gases on the temperature of the planet itself. Today, the Earth is warming more rapidly than ever seen before in the archaeological record. The good news, almost 50 years since a team at MIT built a computer model of the world that illustrated what was happening and described the risks in a book called Limits to Growth, is that most of the top dozen economies are now committed to net zero emissions within a few decades. Leading companies such as IKEA and Unilever are demonstrating that focusing on sustainability can improve overall business performance. And investors are shifting enormous amounts of capital towards these companies and into funds that actively target improved sustainability. And yet, there are still huge forces at work that are actively seeking not simply to slow human innovation and progress, but in some cases even to reverse it. Fossil fuel companies are still investing tens of billions of dollars a year exploring for new resources. Banks like HSBC are still lending to the fossil fuel industry with no indication of when they will stop. Governments are investing tens of billions of dollars a year in subsidizing fossil fuel production and in some cases even considering funding new mines and new fossil fuel power stations. Investing in the past rather than the future has always been a dangerous game. The risks these organizations are taking with their shareholders' money and our planet are shocking. Let's remember that the underlying science of global warming is nothing new. Joseph Fourier identified the insulating effects of the atmosphere 200 years ago and in 1837 wrote of the potential for human activity to change the Earth's temperature. And let's also remember that the financial impact of ignoring these risks is emerging far more rapidly than climate change itself. A thousand dollars invested in Australian miner BHP 10 years ago would be worth about three thousand dollars today. The same money invested in Australian Ethical, one of the world's longest established ethical investors, would be worth over forty thousand dollars. To explore these risks and opportunities as we head towards COP26 in Glasgow in November and to help us understand the threats that we need to overcome and what we can each do, we're delighted to be joined by Marion Wilkinson, one of Australia's most accomplished journalists and author of the newly released book Carbon Club, as well as the environmentalist and campaigner Blair Palazzi, who's the global climate editor for Climate and Capital Media and who previously founded 350.org in Australia and has worked with Greenpeace and the Antarctic Oceans Alliance. As always, ESGX Live will be down to earth, fact-based and interactive. Our live audience can ask questions and contribute to the discussion via the chat and you can also watch on YouTube at live.esgx.org. And if you are watching on YouTube then please do subscribe to the ESGX channel and use the like button. Finally, from me, Nigel Lake in New York, and my co-host Paul Herman in San Francisco, a sincere thank you to our producer Nick Gower and to our ongoing sponsors Pottinger and Hip Investor, thanks to whom ESGX Live is free, open to all, and global. We very much look forward to the discussion. <laughs>